everyone! And welcome back to Stein's Gate! Um, Okrin says he hasn't seen my Yuri all day. Also, we got a mail! Assistant. Oh, we already read these last episode. I had no idea it'd be this crowded. Save me, Ors. Yeah, we already seen all that. Okay, let's continue! I want to be with her, of course, but that's not possible. Moika hasn't replied, which means I have to find her myself. Uh-oh. <laughs> Unfortunately, I don't know anything about her. My only clue is Arc Rewrite, the company Moika supposedly worked at. I find it after a quick search online. Sure enough, their business is producing articles for PC magazines. Luckily, their office is in Akiba. I tried calling first, but it goes to voicemail. I guess they're still closed for the o o Oban holiday. Or maybe it's just a bad time? Looks like I've got no choice but to visit them in person! Oh, we're on a mission! It's the second day of Kamima, and Akiba is deserted. Most of the otaku are lined up at Big Sight right now. I've experienced the craze of Kamima several times firsthand. It's a literal war. It scares me whenever my Yuri goes alone. I can't help but imagine her trampled by a horde of crazed otaku. But in reality, my Yuri is surprisingly quick and tough. I've seen her weave through crowds like you wouldn't believe. Carissa is the one more likely to get trampled. <laughs> I can't help but feel sorry for her. Maybe it was wrong to ask her to go. I mean... Hopefully my Yuri doesn't die, because that'll be very traumatizing for Kurisu. I find the Arc Rewrite office in a fancy-looking building on the outskirts of Akiba. I take the elevator up, but there's nobody there. I lean against the wall and wait. After about 30 minutes, a man dressed in a shirt a uh, shirt and tie appears. I explain that I'm a relative of Kiryu Moika and ask for her contact info. Whoa! But he gives an unexpected answer. He's gonna say, who's that? We don't have an employee by that name. You don't? Well, you didn't think she'd give you the correct information, w would you? Damn, I've been tricked. I should have known better. Moika is working for CERN! Of course her place of employment is fake! Of course! Is this the end of the line? Just as I'm about to turn around and leave, the man pounds his hand as if he remembered something! Oh. Wait a second! There was a girl who worked here just two days before disappearing. I think her name might have been Kiryu. Really? We might still have her resume. I frantically bow my head and ask him to look for it. He's reluctant, but I, 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 I have never seen that word before. I don't even know what that word is. I'm going to say complies. <laughs> the address listed on the resume leads me to a beat up old apartment. Jeez Louise, okay. Not the sort of place you'd expect a single young woman to live in. I feel strange unease as I approach the apartment. For some reason, there's a police car parked in front of the complex. A uniformed officer is standing out front. What the heck is going on? And one room on the second floor, room 202, Moika's, has a blue sheet covering the door. What's going on here? What the heck? I walk up to the police officer. Excuse me, did the person who lives there move? Huh? huh? No! Then... Are you related? I knew her. You haven't heard? A police officer... The police officer looks uncomfortable! The bad feeling in my gut is getting worse. What happened? Suicide! What? What the heck? Suicide? This this episode's getting a trigger warning. But why? When? Yesterday. 
No way. They took her to Toyota, 3rd Central Hospital. Doesn't look like she had any relatives. We don't know who to notify. Will you go see the body? Okay. That's kind of messed up, but sure. I bow my thanks and leave. What? She's dead? You're, you're not going to check if she's actually dead? She could have put a fake person there. Moika's dead? What's going on? It doesn't make any sense. Suicide? Moika, who killed my Yuri in cold blood, committed suicide? Or is this a part of the conspiracy? Could her own men have killed her that made it look like a suicide? Today is the 16th. On Worldline Alpha 1, Moika raided the lab on the 13th. Three days have passed since then. Each time I change the world lines, my Yuri's death gets pushed back one day. So does Moika's raid. It hasn't happened yet in this world line. So why did she die? I don't think she actually died. I think she's faking it so she can get away with murder. I don't get it. This is the first time that this has happened. How should I deal with this? What should I do? I squat on the ground and cradle my head in confusion. If Moika's dead, maybe my Yuri doesn't have to die. No, I don't think Convergence is that kind. Fate demands my Yuri's death. Whenever I try to stop it, something interferes. True, I'm the one who meddled with the timeline, but haven't I paid the price already? I don't know. How did all this happen? A few weeks ago, I was just a college student with a severe case of Chernobyl. Or Chernobyl. <laughs> Save for my Yuri's grandmother, I had never experienced the death of anyone close to me. Death had no place in my life. But how many times have I faced death in these past three days? More! When you count the loops I've made? My heart can't take anymore. I don't know how much longer I can go on. One more. Just one more D-mail to cancel. If I can just get my hands on Moika's phone. Time leap. Time leap. Moika died yesterday around noon. I can go back before that happened. The reason she died isn't important. Whether Mayuri's murderer kills herself is of no concern to me. I just need to cancel that D-mail. I don't think she's actually dead. I think she's still alive. Upon returning to the lab, I casually look up at the second floor window. And what I see shocks me to my core. Oh no. <gasps> Electrical discharge? Uh oh. Someone is using the time leap machine. Who? My Yuri and Daru should be a Kamima. Not even Karisu should be here. I asked her to escort my Yuri yesterday. Oh, it was probably Moika then. Besides, she's against changing the past. So who? Probably Moika. The building shakes. The vibration reaches the street. I can't let this happen. The timeline mustn't be tampered with again. I need to stop it now. Uh-oh. I race up the stairs to the lab. By the time I get there, the shaking has stopped. Uh-oh. It's too late. I qu quietly peek into the development room. Nobody's there. The door was unlocked. Anyone could have walked right in. How could we be so careless? The time leap machine is still faintly warm. So somebody did use it. Who? Did they time leap? This is the first time someone else has used the time leap machine. Just to make sure, I checked that X6800. As expected, the history's been erased. The same thing happens when we send a D-mail. There's nothing I can do about this. It worries me, but I have to focus on Moika. I set up the time leap machine. The maximum leap is 48 hours. To leap more than that, you need to leap 48 hours and then leap again. 42 inch CRT is on downstairs. That's plain as day since the discharge phenomenon just occurred. Uh, question! How can somebody leap 
and their body still isn't here. Only the memories get transferred, so why wouldn't their body be here? That, hmm. Did I miss something? I put on the headgear. Preparation's complete. Okay, we're going. Let's go then. Should I really leap now? Whoa! Okay, um, I think if I don't leap, I think we get the ending to this chapter? I didn't expect it to be so quick though? Um, I'm gonna save. Uh oh, I'm gonna save. Should I really leap now? I'm, I'm not gonna leap. Don't be ridiculous. Of course I should. No? Just a little more, and I can save my Yuri once and for all. I know what will happen if I don't leap now. My Yuri will die, and I will taste that pain and despair once again. And then I will leap. It's the same either way. I closed my phone. There's no need to rush. Calm down. I can endure the pain, if need be. I should exploit my one advantage, the time leap machine, to the fullest extent possible. And that means knowing exactly when my Yuri will die. Pattern suggests that Mayuri's death should happen around 7 or 8 tonight. But things are a little different this time. Moika killed herself before Mayuri was scheduled to die. How much influence will that have on Convergence? There's a chance Mayuri won't die. We might already have won! In that case, I shouldn't waste my effort time leaping. I have no obligation to save Moika. I'll wait until Kurisu contacts me. It's 12.30 now. There's still about seven hours left. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> oh, we're gonna see this through to the end. I hear nothing but the slow, steady click of... Tick of the clock. The sound is echoing inside my head. Even if I plug my ears, it doesn't stop. I've spent several hours searching for the IBM 5100, but as expected, I found nothing. I still can't imagine how Moika's email affected the computer's whereabouts. What does her phone model have to do with anything? Does keeping the same phone somehow tell her that there's an IBM 5100 at Yanabayashi Shrine? That doesn't make sense. Even the butterfly effect must have limits. But on the other hand, truth is often stranger than fiction. Sometimes the simplest things have consequences that no one could ever imagine. So I can't rule it out entirely either. In other words, I have nothing. Oh no, Akuin! I twist my lips into a sneer of self-mockery. It's 7.46pm, the moment of truth. If my Yuri is indeed fated to die, I should be here- I, I should hear from Kurisu soon. I hope nothing happens. All that I ask is to hear Mayuri's voice, to know once and for all that she is safe. <gasps> oh, it's a call! Uh, I guess I'll answer! Hello? Hello? Oh, no! Okabe! She's. Uh, why? I don't. Oh my gosh! Kurisu is sobbing! So I know, even without asking. She saw my Yuri die. She just... I saw it happen! She's dead! My Yuri's dead! This... This can't be! Oh no... She... Suddenly collapsed? Why? It doesn't make sense! She's not breathing! She won't answer at all! Please, my Yuri! Oh, that's so sad! Okabe, what should I? What do I do? Help! Please, my Yuri's dead! I'm sorry for making you go through this. Oh no. With that, I hang up the phone! Maybe it's because I didn't see it happen, or maybe my heart has simply grown numb. But this time, I don't feel much pain. I hate myself for it. Oh wow, I pound my fist against the table! Oh gosh, as expected, the deadline is around 8pm on the 16th. Unless I change the world line before the time limit, my Yuri will die. Okay, we're leaping! Oh no, poor Kurisu! 
Upon the headgear and activate the time leap machine. I must obtain Moika's phone. No matter what it takes. Oh gosh, okay. We're going. We're going. I feel so bad for Karizu. Oh boy. Okay. I hope I made the right choice to get more of the endings. Okay. We are leaping to Friday, Thursday, Wednesday. Wednesday, okay. I make several consecutive leaps to travel back to the 11th. When I arrive, it's just past 8 p.m. I'm heading out. I leave the lab without waiting for the others to respond. Oh gosh, okay. He's gonna go see Moika. I head to Moika's ratty apartment. There's no sign of the police this time. Moika's suicide won't happen for another four days. I run up the iron stairs and stand in front of the door to the to unit 202. The lights aren't on inside. I start getting anxious. Maybe she's not here. There's no intercom, so I reluctantly knock on the door. No reply. I try again with the same result. Tam, might as well try the doorknob. <gasps> it's unlocked! Oh, I got mail. Hang on. Mayuri! Are you coming- uh, Are you coming back? Are you coming back to the lab today? Uh, uh, Mayuri? Uh, uh, let me answer you. Uh, uh. Uh, I don't know, but you don't have to worry. You don't have anything to worry about. You don't have to worry about anything. Blah, 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 blah. Okay. Bye, bye, Yuri. Oh, man. I'm on a mission. Oh, I didn't mean to click that. I'm on a mission. I'm on a mission, bye, Yuri. It's unlocked. I take a deep breath. This could be a trap. Remember, we're not dealing with an ordinary person. Moika is a rounder, an agent of CERN. If I die here... What will happen to Mayuri? Will Karisu or Daru use the time leap machine to save her? I need to be careful. But at the same time, I can't save Mayuri by doing nothing. So I steal myself, open the door, and peek inside. Oh boy, the apartment is dark, too dark to see. But I feel someone's presence. Uh oh! I step inside. The apartment is practically empty. Minimal furnishings. Only the barest necessities of life. But there, by the window, is a figure in the moonlight. <gasps> Moika, hello! A woman is sitting on the floor, her head bowed. Are you okay? There's no one else here. I approach the woman and stare down at her, gritting my teeth in a desperate effort to maintain control. But ever since the first time she killed my Yuri, I've tried my best to avoid thinking about this woman, but now I have no choice. I can't accomplish my goal until I have the answers I need from her. I must obtain the IBM 5100 to escape the Alpha Attractor Field and rescue Mayuri. Kiryu Moika. Kiryu Moika. I had another name for her once. It hurts to remember, but I, uh, I forced it into the back of my mind. Can you hear me? Moika's fingers twitch. Uh oh. She sluggishly lifts her head. But she doesn't look up. She stares at my feet instead. Okay. Who? Huh? She finally speaks in a frail voice! Moika has always had trouble speaking, but seems especially severe today. I notice her hair and clothes are disheveled. She looks awful, though I suppose there, that's no surprise, given that she kills herself in four days. FB? FB? FB Is it you? FB. Look at what are you talking about? FB? I've heard that name before. Yeah, she said she has to do everything for FB. If I'm not mistaken, that's her superior's code name. <laughs> Why won't you contact me? I did everything you told me to do. Um. The phone in Moika's hands glows faintly. She's still clinging to it, I see. Did I do something wrong? I'll fix it. I promise. Just don't abandon me. I'll do anything for you, FB. 
Are you okay? Please, answer me. Give me orders. I'll obey. Tell me what to do. Tell me. Tell me. Uh. Oh my gosh. Okay. She's crying. I'm at a loss for words. Yeah, me too. I don't know what's going on. I wasn't expecting to find her in such a miserable state. I mean, you probably should have expected that. She was so cold and so calm when she killed Mayuri. It's like she's a different person now. Is this another effect of the world line change? But it's only been a week since she sent her D-mail. Could... But how could she have changed so much? I get on my knees and shake Moika by the shoulders. Oi. Hey! Can you Oi. hear me? Hey! <laughs> FB, why... Why won't you answer? Kiryu Moika! Moika! Hey! It's me! Okabe! No response. Moika just keeps crying and mumbling to herself. I shake harder, but she doesn't react. She doesn't even resist. Looking down, I notice that she's typing rapidly on her phone. Bewildered, I look at the screen. FB, 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 What the? What happened to Moika? I don't know, she's taking this rejection hard. From what little I understand, it sounds like she's lost contact with her supervisor, FB. I don't understand how that could turn Moika into such a wreck. It doesn't matter. I don't care what happens to her. I'm here for one thing. Recalling my purpose, I reach for Moika's phone. <laughs> no! Oh my god. A sharp crack echoes through the room. Moika slapped my hand away. It didn't hurt, but her reaction was lightning quick. Now Moika curls up into a ball, hugging the phone to her chest. It was like this from the moment I met her. She never let go of her phone, not even for a second, as if it were the only thing keeping her alive. Oh my gosh. Mid. No males. Mid. No males. FB. You mean from FB? Mid. No males. I make several more attempts to take her phone or take her phone while she babbles incoherently, but she just slaps my hand away each time. He's like, give me that. Give me that. I don't care. Next, I try persuasion. I promise to help her search for FB if she lends me her phone. It's a lie, of course, though come to think of it. I would like a piece of FB, too. But that can wait until after I've saved my Yuri. That's <laughs> not the way he means it. <laughs> but Moika doesn't buy it. If that is, she heard me at all. <laughs> Damn it, we're getting nowhere. Maybe I should take it away from her by force? I mean, you could like get something and knock her out and take it. But what if she tries to kill me before I can send the mail? I mean, she's in a state of distress and she doesn't even know you're there. So you could whack her with like a book. And she'd knock out or something, I don't know. In her current state, she might not have the strength to retaliate. On the other hand, if she does retaliate, there's not much I can do against someone with a gun. What should I do? Her gun. Where would she keep it? I quickly scan the room, but there's no sign of it. Crap, that startled me! Ah! Uh, Kurisu! Why are you calling me? Hang on! Let me save. Okay, confirmed. We're we're still on chapter nine. Could she have picked a worse time? Hello? Rizu? Hello? I stand up and move to the entrance where I can take her call without letting Moika out of my sight. Where are you? Sorry, I'm busy. Is it a woman? You're with a woman, aren't you? Why would you assume that? Is that the first thing that comes to mind? You really are a mainstream girl. Shut up! You promised you'd help us with the phone wave, remember? Or is your lab mem number just for show? Get Daru to help. I can't do it today. What are you doing? Where are you? Kiryu Moika's apartment. 
So you are with a woman. You're the worst. Has she not met Moika in this world line? I quickly give Kurisu a simplified version of the usual explanation. Kurisu listens attentively, as she always does. Maybe she's more considerate than I give her credit for. As soon as I finish, Kurisu gives me gives it to me straight. You have to take it from her by force. You've seen too many Hollywood movies. You're up against an agent of CERN. Play nice and you could end up dead. Don't hesitate. Remember, you're doing this to save my Yuri. I know you're pretty weak and scrawny, but you should be able to handle her in her current state. Gee, thanks. At least she's not beating around the bush. <laughs> Suddenly she lowers her voice. You might think I'm a monster for saying this. Not that I care what you think, but... Kill her if you have to. Whoa! You're a monster. But you're not a hypocrite. That's what I love about you, Christina. Ah! L love? Ah! What's the matter with her now? I mean it. I wish my conviction were as strong as yours. Well, thanks! But that's not all right. There's a reason why you're willing to suggest murder as an option. How did you reach that conclusion? Good, you're still thinking. I can't be certain whether your story is true, and I don't quite understand this attractor field hi hypothesis. But, based on what you told me, if this Kiryu woman commits suicide four days from now, then that means her death flag is already active. In other words, this world line has approved her death. On previous world lines where that wasn't the case, you probably could have killed her couldn't have killed her even if you tried. Something would have happened to prevent it. Or possibly killing her would have caused a dramatic shift in world line divergence. But on this specific world line, her death is already certain. As you've experienced with Mayuri's death, the result is what matters not the process. I believe the same applies to Kiryu. It doesn't matter how she dies. In other words, I can kill her instead of letting her commit suicide. Jeez Louise! She's already going to die, so that makes it okay. That's the kind of argument a murderer would make. Don't be a hypocrite. We're not talking about right and wrong here, Okabe. She's unforgiving as always, but it actually feels nice to speak frankly like this. Right in front of Moika! <laughs> what about the law? Even if fate forgives me, society won't. As long as you have the time leap machine, you can undo anything. Even murder. She has a point. The result will be that you gain the necessary information without killing anybody. I understand. <sighs> Just remember one thing. You're responsible for what you do. I guess that's quite a thing for me to say, huh? After telling you to kill her. That's true! <laughs> it's fine. Your advice was truly becoming of a mad scientist. Get it done, Okabe. Bye. Oh my gosh. She hangs up without another word. Strangely, I find Karisu's harsh tone encouraging. Who does she think she is? A general? I manage a smirk as I close my phone. Hi, Moika! Moika's still sitting on the floor! Okay, well, I think with that, I'm gonna leave killing Moika to the next episode. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you want to, you can like, comment, subscribe, do whatever you want, and we shall see what happens in the next episode of Steinsgate. Bye bye!